How's it going everybody? For today's beer review, we're going to be taking a look at Three Floyd's Live a Rich Life, a Belgian-styled double India Pale Ale. So this is Live a Rich Life by Three Floyd's Brewery, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and get the name out of the way. I know that's a really strange name for a beer, but this is actually a beer that's in dedication to a member of their brewery team that had uh, passed away. It says right on the side that it's a memory of Rich Shepherd. Um, and it says he passed away on April 11th of 2011. So I think it's really cool that they did a, uh, a dedication beer for him. Uh, that's just a really cool gesture from them. And um, it's interesting also because I've never had a Belgian-styled IPA. Um, I don't really know exactly what that means, per se. Um, it may mean that like it's like less hoppy. I know over in a lot of places in Europe, they don't do their stuff near as hoppy as we do because they don't like it. Um, but it wouldn't make sense that it's imperial then at that point. So I don't really know what to expect. Um, there is no commercial description on the bottle. It just says, Live a Rich Life in Memory of Rich Shepherd, 713-1990 to 411-11. Um, really interesting artwork, though. It's simple, but it's kind of done in this like, three or four color tone uh, art. I assume that's kind of like a portrait of him. And uh, the beer comes in at 9.5% ABV, so it's decently high, but it is a double, so it's to be expected. Um, I'm going to be drinking this out of my Dogfish Head branded IPA glass, so let's just get right to it. It was interesting because this is a beer that didn't show up on the Chicago distribution list, and I just kind of stumbled upon it. This seems to have pretty low head potential. I'm going to pour this extremely aggressively. So, very, very low head potential. I mean, I pretty much glugged that out of the bottle, and it barely formed about a half finger of a just slightly off-white head. The bubbles in it are medium-sized bubbles. There's not very many, if any at all, streaming up, so the head's probably going to dissipate rather quickly. Um, the color... I would call this, um, it's, it's hazy, it may be slightly unfiltered, um, and I would call it just basically kind of a honey gold color, sort of, as you can see here. The smell on this beer, it's got a lot of things you'd expect from an, from an Imperial or a double IPA, like your sweet, vibrant tropical fruits like mango, peach, apple, grapefruit, orange, lots of hops. But there's also a bit of maltiness to it also. And um, that could be due in part to this beer maybe being older. Um, I'm not sure. It could be because it's a Belgian style. Um, the date is smeared off. I can see where they did print a date, but it's smeared off. So for all I know, this could be an old beer. I'm not sure. Um, but it does have a fairly decent amount of malt to the smell. So that may be a good thing, it may not, I don't know, but uh, let's give it a taste and uh, see if it's any good. It's interesting, to say the least. Yeah, that's actually not bad. It's, um... It's hard. It's kind of hard to put into words, and I guess maybe it's that it's a Belgian um, styled IPA, and I had read before, and I didn't really know what they meant by this until tasting it. But it's it's cleaner. This tastes a lot more clean than an uh, American double um, IPA, and what I mean by that is, yes, it has the huge amounts of bitter hops and sweet. Um, you know, tropical fruits like I mentioned in the in the smell. But the bitterness, it doesn't linger, and the sweetness isn't cloyingly sweet. It's like you get all those flavors, you get the, the sweet, you know, um, orange and grapefruit and hops, and then you get the bitter hops, and then it just, it cuts. There's no 
lingering effects. It's um, it has a very thin body, which with this style, I think it works nicely. Um, and it's it's thirst quenching. And a lot of times with imperial, you know, IPAs, um, they're not thirst quenching. They're something kind of you know syrupy. They're big. They're sweet. They're they're something that you sip on. Um, and I and I and I think that I, I understand now what a Belgian style IPA, IPA is, and um, I think I like it. I think I prefer it. Um, like I said, this is my first one, and um, clean is really just the best way to describe it. It's actually kind of an interesting phenomenon. You have all this immense flavor, yet it just finishes so quick and concise, and it's just a very clean finish. It's thirst quenching. It's thin. It goes down easy. Um, and the flavor is just gone like that. There's no lingering taste afterwards. Um, and that's awesome. Uh, I actually really like this a lot. Um, I wish a lot more IPAs would end, would finish this way in the development of the taste because that's, uh, that's really good. So um, as far as a, a rating goes on this, I want to give it a 100 in the style um, overall. I want to I want to backtrack that. For me personally, I want to give this beer like a 99 overall, and I want to give it like a 95 in the style. And the reason why is because this drinks more like a pale ale to me, like an imperial pale ale kind of. Um, and that may be due because it's a uh, Belgian styled, and it does finish so clean that it's more reminiscent of like a pale ale. Um, but yeah, that's what I feel comfortable with. A 95 in the style and like a 99 overall. Um, this stuff's awesome. I want to recommend it, but I don't really know if it's something you can still get your hands on. If it's a retired beer, I have to look it up. Um, but it's really good. Like I said, I just stumbled upon this. It was just kind of tucked away in the back of a cooler. Um, I went through the Three Floyds distribution list, and this is not something that showed up anywhere on there. Um, and like I said, there's just one left that had kind of a tattered up label in the back, but I'm glad I tried it. But anyway, that has been my review of Three Floyds Live a Rich Life. Hope you guys enjoyed the beer review as always. If you can get your hands on it, give it a try, and stay tuned for the next beer review.